This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you guys for joining us today. With me is John Cameron in the middle. We've got uh, Richard Fields. Almost forgot your name there, Richard. At the other end. Gentlemen, uh, Trump and frankly, the governors all around the governors and ma mayors all around the country are signing yet more executive orders. I guess Trump decided that he was going to do the stimulus all on his own. Uh, what you guys think about that? Well, other than the fact that it's not constitutional and uh, the Democrats aren't suing it anyway, uh, that's it. I mean, it's, it's it, the whole thing is an exercise in uh, populist. How, how, how can I give more money away than the Democrats? Uh, which of course isn't uh, is newly created. It's false money. It's uh, counterfeit money. Uh, how, you know, how can I one up the Democrats in the uh, in the freebie campaign? Uh, because that's that's all it is. So I, the way I understand it, that uh, yeah, Congress actually has to uh, uh, print the money. I mean, or or well, no, okay. Congress doesn't print the money. The Fed prints the money. Okay. Congress has to authorize spending. Yeah. That's the power of the purse, supposedly. Yeah. The president can't just willy-nilly decide. Well, I'm going to go spend money on this. Yeah. Uh, but he's doing it, and the Democrats are saying, "Titch, titch, titch," but they're not doing anything to stop it. They're not mm -hmm. uh, filing suit. They're just saying they're afraid to because they don't want to be uh, cast as the bad guys as study shutting off the gravy train. And that's exactly what Trump planned when he went on this wild escapade. And so yeah. he'll probably get by with it because nobody's calling him on it. Well, and if somebody calls them on it, they're going to have to one up. How are they going? To, Congress is going to have to one up with more. So, what is this? Uh, what I found interesting is the, in this is how, if if people don't know by now that they they should be uh, voting people into office who will get government out of their pockets, then I don't understand. I, I just I don't get it. I don't understand. Well, here, it's, 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 it's kind of simple. We have two things going on. We have financial repression and fiscal dominance. Financial repression is the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates at zero or uh, below the zero or at least negative compared to the inflation rate, which means that the government can borrow at essentially no cost as much as they want. Then you've got fiscal dominance, and that's the, the federal government spending so much money that the Fed has absolutely no choice but to lend, create new money and lend it to the Fed at those super low interest rates. Otherwise, if they didn't do that, it would cause a, uh, a depression or a recession. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. You've got uh, the Feds and the, the federal government, the Treasury, are working together. I should say they, you know, the, the deep state working together with the Fed. They're all part of the same to... Uh, inflate our way out of the problem, but it'll, we can't inflate our way out of the problem. We are going exactly down the same path as uh, Weimar Germany, the, the, uh, you know, the, the Roman Empire, uh, Venezuela, uh, Argentina, uh, uh, you name it. We are, we are trying to pretend that we can buy stuff with counterfeit money and that the counterfeit money won't decrease in value. It is, it, it is tautologically impossible. Well, you know, the, the, the path that the Republicans and the Democrats are taking is down. Well, no, I, I, I agree with that. My, my point was that, that after watching this lunacy, you know, and, and the COVID thing, the pandemic really pointed out that, None of these independent regulatory agencies, Food and Drug or, or uh, the CDC or Congress or the president or governors or mayors or any of these people who are in positions of power in government entities of any kind, any like, any size, know, know anything and are horrible at the job that they're supposedly set up to do. It's mismanagement from top to bottom and why people aren't saying, uh, just I vote for none of the above, or in this case, I vote for Joe Jorgensen because Joe Jorgensen's going to get rid of all these government agencies that are creating funny money and spending it. This this FDA and CDC that have basically created this monster, um, Congress that's that's doing its best to destroy the economy, a president who's trying to help them do it. I mean, the insanity should um, show up in the voting booth. 
And obviously, the, the thing is, the thing is, the pandemic is merely the pin that pricked the bubble. All of the things that are happening, all of the economic breakdown that we're witnessing right now, all of the uh, bailout things were just speeded up by the pandemic. It was bound to happen one way or another for one excuse or another, regardless. Back in uh, September of last year, the uh, Fed found out that they had to start lending money to banks in the overnight markets because lo and behold, all of the deficit spending was causing a shortage in overnight funds. Uh, so they, you know, it's, it's the fiscal, it's the federal government, fiscal dominance, the federal government borrowing way more money than bond buyers are willing to lend, whether they're from China or from uh, here, or here at home or, or other countries. Nobody wants to keep dollars on their balance sheet anymore because the dollar is going down. Yeah. That being yeah. the case, the only way you can get more dollars is to make, you know, is to, is to print them up, counterfeit. That's, that's what's going on. The pandemic just accelerated the thing with uh with it made it go, it made it go, uh, made it go uh, ballistic. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, and, and I'm, I'm, I think in a, in a way this is good. Uh, well, I don't know how, well, yeah, yeah. it but brings the, yeah. the problem to a head. The problem is that everybody's going to blame the pandemic. That's not the problem. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an accelerant, but it's not the underlying problem. The underlying problem is we have a, a sick dying uh, uh, empire that can't figure out how to reduce I can't figure out why spending six or seven times more than all the rest of the countries in the world on defense is a problem. Can't figure out why uh, when you spend two thirds of the federal budget on transfer payments, I'm talking about Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, uh, interest under that, why that is not a problem. Uh, why when you have a, a government that has 50% uh, spending or 50% of the, of, the, uh, of the taxpayers uh, footing 97% of the tax revenue, why that's not a problem, you know, it's it, the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole system is top heavy. No, no, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. I'd like, what I'd like to talk about is some of the, uh, at, at the end of uh, every, at, when either right before or during the, the crash of every uh, empire made out of paper mache or house of cards or whatever you want to call it, there, um, there, there have historically been a number of things going on. A breakdown in, in uh, civil behavior, the way people treat each other, you know, instead of with kindness and respect and dignity, uh, they, they treat each other as, as if anyone not of my family, not of my tribe is not human. And then you see an increase in violence, you see a breakdown of, of uh, you see civil disobedience turning into uh, outright criminal acts, and I think I think we're seeing that we're seeing that in Chicago, we're seeing that in Portland, we're seeing it. Um, I think we're seeing it the way people are driving. I think that there's that people people know that something's going on. Even people that were educated in public schools by the Communist Teachers Association in California understand that there is something inherently rotten and wrong and it's showing up as rage and because of the pandemic where people are locked down and they they can't get to their bars they can't get to their well they can get to their pot store but they can't get to their bar um they can't get to their sporting event they they can't get to the circuses for the masses that that kept roman citizens from revolting right before the collapse of their economy and then they're tuned into this I don't know what what we should call social media and lamestream me, lamestream media now. They're they're turned into into lunacy that's actually fanning the flames of hatred and and lack of civil discourse and all the rest of this. So I mean, you could make a point that this feels exactly like what the the Romans talked about right before Rome burned. And so, um, well, you're old enough to remember that. I'm not, but I suspect you got a point there. Well, actually, I, I let me look at my clay tablet. I took some notes. Hold on. <laughs> well, I think this whole thing is government overreach from executive actions to to the local towns have kind of interjected themselves in every aspect of your life. You can't cut your grass as long as you want anymore, or you can't put in certain kinds of types of uh, like a garden in your front yard because it might lower property values or some goofy thing it, it's just kind of stretched all and i think people are tired of it a lot of people have said you know whether it's another shooting in arizona from a guy who had a noise complaint with the police shot another young man in arizona it's just everywhere we turn around the government is abusing 
its powers that we have granted him and essentially saying, yeah, well, tough. What are you going to do about it? Hmm. And so, uh, so why, that's why we're seeing violence in Portland. I mean, the Portland may be directed by like Antifa or small groups like that. But the reason people accept it is because we've called kind of grown accustomed to this massive government overreach. And so many of us are tired of it. We're willing to just say, shrug your shoulders. I was surprised Trump signed this executive order and I was expecting myself to be all upset because, you know, libertarian and natural. I just can't even care anymore. I just, I've just got, you know, I don't even know if I can care anymore. It's just as you've got the mayor of LA saying they're going to cut off water and power for people who are showing who have a party and you've got Trump signing executive orders to extend unemployment benefits. And I'm just saying, you're all just awful. I said, well, yeah, I mean, you don't care. And, and, but well, I, here's, here's, here's where, here's where, I mean, I understand the, the, uh, the sense of ennui and the sense of, you know, uh, you know, throw your hands up, but here's, here's why people will continue to care. The, the bill will come due. It won't come due in taxes because government uh, politicians are are, are uh, crazy, but they're not stupid. They're not going to raise taxes. Bernie they, is. They simply, they simply can't. Uh, there's no way, you know, if they raise taxes, the revenue will go down. The old, the old uh, uh, Laffer curve, you know, there's a the Laffer curve says that as, as revenue goes up, if you have 100% taxation, you'll get uh, no revenue because nobody is going to pay 100% tax. If you have 0% taxation, you're going to get no revenue because, well, that's 0%. Somewhere in the middle, there's a sweet spot, uh, and we're way, way higher than the sweet spot as far as uh, where you know where uh, an increase in taxes will increase revenue. What you are going to see is inflation, and, and we don't see it now other than in assets. We see uh, inflation in the stock market. The stock market has made new highs, if you can believe it, since the, uh, since the pandemic. Uh, and you'll see it in the bond market uh, because as bond prices or as bond interest rates go down, bond prices go up. So you'll see it in the bond market. You'll see it in the stock market. Housing exactly. values are still are continuing to go up. You'll see it there. So you'll see it in real estate. But those are that's a good kind of inflation. Everybody, well, I don't care about you know stock prices are going up. Other than that, the the, the rich are getting richer than I am. So there's a little envy involved. But it's a it's a relatively benign form of inflation. But now that the fiscal part is kicking in, the $600 or $400 or whatever it is, uh, weekly bump to unemployment, the $1,200 checks, it's a small part of the, of the stimulus. It's probably only, I don't know, 10, 15% of the amount of money that's being spent on stimulus. The rest is going to corporations, and crony corporations and so forth. But it's enough to send a, a little bit of that stimulus money, a little bit of that counterfeit money into the real Main Street economy and cause inflation. So we are, in fact, we're already starting to see inflation in food prices. You looked at the price of a hamburger lately. We're going to start seeing it in in uh, other prices as well. Food, because the, the economy is essentially shut down for a lot of different things. And if you have a, you know, a, a shut down economy, they're not producing anything. You're not producing anything that reduces supply. Supply is down. Money and supply is up. The balance is prices go up, and that's what's going to happen. It's well, starting to happen, here. and once we yeah. see rip roaring inflation, which will happen at the consumer level, then you're going to be pissed. Everybody's going to be pissed, but they won't understand why. They won't understand what is you know what's causing this inflation, and the politicians <laughs> will turn around and say, "Well, it's McDonald's fault, or it's uh, Walmart's fault, or it's you know the, the it's it's the corporation's fault." It's not. It's the Federal Reserve and the Federal Government's fault. And has to, we have to remember that and continue to remind people that the government is is the only cause of inflation ever and always. Well, Richard, I think I, I agree with what you're saying, and I want to add two things to it. I was wondering, I was looking around, I was wondering where all this money I saw being spent by people that I, I'm a pretty good judge of, maybe I was a pickpocket in a previous life, but I, I look at people and I'm, I can make a pretty good judgment, despite how they're dressed or what they're driving or even where they live, about how much money they got. And I'm seeing uh, people out at, you know, at restaurants and coffee houses. I'm seeing people on the bike trail with new toys. And I'm seeing and I'm thinking, where are these people getting this money? Because it's I know personal debt. I don't know what's happening with personal debt, but I don't think it's going crazy. And I thought, well, it's that extra what is it, 67% over what the average recipient of, of uh, unemployment is making compared to the job they had. But there's two other factors that I think we're forgetting that have an immediate multiplier effect. 
the cessation of the payment of student loans, that student loan bubble that was going on, where, where people are paying as much in student loan debt as they were for food or rent in some cases. Now they have that money to spend because you know they're not being smart and putting whatever money they're getting in the bank. They're spending it. A lot of they're, people are putting it into Robinhood accounts, though. But they're putting in what? They're putting it into Robinhood uh, stock bro uh, brokerage accounts. Yes. And uh, Robinhood. Yeah. And that's a fun thing. Um, and the other thing. Uh, it's a real thing. I'm, I'm not kidding. Oh, no, no, I know. I know. And then and then um, the other thing that's going on is people aren't paying rent. And since what, 42 percent of Americans are rent payers rather than homeowners. I mean, homeownership's at, at near all time high in this country. Um, uh, but so they're not paying rent either. So people are, are have a huge amount of cash compared to what they had before if they have any kind of job or if they're collecting unemployment. You know, paying their student loans because the, the you know the only way the government can keep these diploma mills out there and all these regulations and regulate regulators is to keep pumping out higher and higher degrees for them to be required to have to be a secretary somewhere. I mean, you have to you have to have a bachelor degree to be a secretary somewhere. Now. Well, keep in mind, John, you live in uh, Sacramento, which is the capital city, and all yeah. you know, just like in the in the. Uh, uh, in the movies, all the money, I forget the name of the movie, the, the, the Hunger Games, yeah, the Hunger Games, just like in the Hunger Games, all of the money comes to the capital. Yeah. Sacramento is a minor capital, a provincial capital, gets a lot of money come from the other counties in the state. And uh, and of course, the, the major capital, Washington, D.C., it's seeing uh, no uh, letdown in the amount of money that comes in, mainly because the Fed's lending it, but that's mm -hmm. another story, which we've gone through at, at length. But what happens is, uh, you're seeing, a, 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 I think it's a million and a half jobs have been uh, eliminated in the public sector, but almost all of those jobs, job eliminations have been at the local and county government level, the city and county government level, where they have to balance the budget to a certain extent at the state level, although I suspect that uh, that hasn't really happened in, in California yet. Federal job holders, hardly any job losses because, uh, hey, they can all work from home and that's what they're doing, or they're on furlough with full pay. And, uh, you know, so the, the people that live in Sacramento and the people that live in uh, Washington, D.C., they're not hurting because they, no. they're still they're still getting, they're still on the payroll. Well, and, and uh, not working very hard and yeah. not, not having much to do other than go out and spend their money on new toys. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, so let's talk about that. That one, uh, James, I, I, I don't know if I can I can lead into this. No, I'm not sure about it. Um, let's talk about that that breakdown in civil order. Um, I was reading a, some reading some of the comments by the mayor of Chicago and the superintendent of police or whatever the name of the chief of police is in Chicago, and they're flat out saying this is unexcusable. This is a crime. These aren't aren't people stealing bread to feed their families because they're starving. These are people taking advantage of a situation to simply line their own pockets and what they're doing is wrong, it's a crime, and we're going to hold them accountable for it, and da 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 So at least in Chicago, the powers that be are saying, enough. This this craziness where you're, you're basically losing or using a, a rumor that said that a child was uh, apparently killed as an excuse to load up your caravans of looters and head for the Miracle Mile to... Uh, uh, to to loot the high end stores is just that those days are over. They it, they one of the pictures I showed was all the bridges that you should raise the bridges in Chicago so people can't get it at, at downtown anymore. I bet I bet an awful lot of people in Portland wish they could raise bridges in Portland um, so that you couldn't get to it. But it's not uh, it's not uh, surrounded by river. I mean, there's one beautiful river running through it, but um, it, this is, I think, people are getting fed up with this, uh, the obvious dichotomy of, uh, yes, there have been wrongs, um, George Floyd or anybody else uh, who is guilty of nothing more than really nothing, you know, like the guy in New York that was selling Lucy's and got killed, and and this guy supposedly was had a $20 counterfeit bill. These are all... These are nothing crimes if they're even crimes and they lost their lives. And that's 
that's something we libertarians are trying to be trying to get rid of of this massive layer upon layer of regulation for years and qualified immunity that keeps you know the thugs that that overreach at least in police from doing it i think people are finally getting fed up i'm, well, yeah, I'm understanding that gun stores are you can't buy ammo in california it's hard enough to buy with the rigmarole you got to go through but uh, gun stores are selling guns at, a, at an insane rate and ammunition is uh, it's almost impossible to get common rounds like 5.56 and 9 millimeter um, you know, even 22 long rifle things that, that people will use for varmint hunting or burglar hunting um, well yeah you think of guns going uh, gun sales going off the, off, uh, off the roof a, a, a person I know very well who is anti second amendment is now talking about buying a gun because uh, she's afraid that the uh, current administration will decline to uh, leave the White House come November if uh, if uh, defeated, and that's a real fear out there. Uh, so it's not just the uh, you know the hard right or the uh, you know the traditional Second Amendment people that are that are uh, 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 arming up now. It's, well, it's, it's a whole lot of different people. Well, well, I know this person. Richard. Uh, you, you may have met uh, this okay. person. Anyway, uh, it, it's interesting to me that uh, we have a, a situation with with the riots where the whole, I mean, Black Lives Matter is kind of nebulous. You've got a whole lot of people who are very peaceful protesters, see something that has been going wrong for millennia, and the straw, the, the George Floyd was a straw that broke the camel's back. They're trying to gain attention, do something about it. You've got a, a, a one splinter of Black Lives Matter that's, that's run by avowed uh, Marxists. Marxist. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're up to no good. They're just trying to uh, cause civil strife for their own ends. And then you've got uh, thugs on the street that say, hey, uh, there's a disturbance. Let's, go, let's use it to go rob Macy's. So, you know, there, there's three separate elements there. There are the professional troublemaker Marxists. There are uh, which is a minority, and there are the thugs, which is a, a even probably even smaller minority, and then the vast majority of the Black Lives Matters protesters are honest people saying enough is enough. We need change, and we need to ally ourselves with that honest majority while uh, uh, making sure that we don't condone looting, arson, and uh, and Marxism, which is which is you know the the, the minority part of the movement. Yeah, I think okay. the rejection of violence, right? I think, sorry. No, it's okay. I think the rejection of violence, right? It's is where we draw the line. You can believe whatever you want. You can you can be a communist. You can be a Marxist as long as you don't support violence to achieve those goals. Yeah, I mean, you can be Marxist, whatever you want. Marxists, by their very nature, support violence. And and I just want to drop a little point here as we're all as we're all. Uh, I guess Bernie Sanders uh, tried to foot uh, a, a bill to do a one-time tax on billionaires because, you know, he thinks he can, he can uh, uh, take money from the rich to, uh, to, you know, pay for some of this nonsense that we're doing. And if you run the math, it, it wouldn't, you know, it's, it's like peeing in a pool to raise the level of it. It's not, if I can say that on the air, it's not going to do anything. You, you, you want the rich to have their money so they can make jobs. Uh, if you take it away from them and give them people that don't know what to do with it, then they just, you know, it just goes away. So, um, but the, I was just reading for, you know, some research on a book um, and looking at what uh, the outcomes of, of some Marxist uh, strategies. Stalin killed in the forced collectivization in the early 30s in the Soviet Union, just in the Ukraine, somewhere between six and seven million Ukrainians. So, yeah, I, I don't remember the numbers offhand, but uh, yeah. Stalin killed probably 30, 40 million. Yeah. Uh, Mao killed another 30, 40 million at least. Oh, uh, no, Mao killed somewhere between 50 and 100 million. They make, they yeah, make, I mean, the, the numbers, the numbers, it's demo side, yeah. uh, and it's, it's uh, beyond anything that we can possibly imagine in, in the States. And make Hitler look like a piker. Yeah. which is hard to do. Yeah. And in the name of communism, socialism, Marxism, whatever ism you want to call it, and even in Nazi Germany, it was national socialism. Yet we have people in this country insisting 
standing up and avowing that they're 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 socialists and and that that's the way to go and getting elected Congress. So. Um, you know, yeah, they call it democratic uh, socialism. It's it's sort of the third world thing. Uh, I'm all in fa they're all in favor of free elections until they get elected, at which point that's the last election. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I find it interesting that uh, this, this casual friend of yours is actually concerned that if Trump loses the election, he'll refuse to uh, leave the White House. I'm, uh, I just, I'm, I'm amused by that because I remember... Uh, what was her name? Hillary? I think her name was Hillary. It still might be Hillary. Demanding that uh, if uh, when Trump lost, that he accept the uh, the election and not uh, protest it. And uh, when she lost, she immediately challenged the election in in a number of states as being null and void and and all the rest of that. So it's very interesting how this thing goes depending on, on who uh, who wins and who loses. Well, bringing up Hillary is actually good to our last little bit of news here. Um, a vampire turns the other day that a bat uh, sit there and uh, bit our Miss Joe Jorgensen. My yeah, son. yeah, Joe Jorgensen, the libertarian uh, presidential candidate, was uh, is on a campaign tour. She's actually the only uh, presidential candidate that's actually out in a campaign bus touring the country and making campaign stops. Wait, we can't call them campaign stops. She's making campaign protests because that's the only way that you can gather in public with masks and, and uh, social distancing, of course. Uh, anyway, George Arkansas was bit by a bat. She is now denying that she is Batwoman, which of course is what you would expect Batwoman to do. Hmm. Well, I, I think her, uh, we already know what her superpower is, honesty and yes. intelligence. Uh, and having a rational plan to uh, to help people uh, throw off the yoke of bad government and self-govern as rational human beings are completely able to do um, and get rid of the, the, the biggest cost to anyone in the United States of America. And that's the cost of government interference in their ability to run their own lives. So I, I think that she has a plan for doing it, which, which yeah. consists of number one, reduce the military to a fraction of its size by bringing all the troops home within the first 100 days from overseas. Second, uh, get rid of all of the rules and regulations and subsidies and whatnot on health care, thereby reducing the cost of health care by 75%. And third, vetoing any balanced or unbalanced budget put to her by Congress, thereby reducing the cost of government as a whole uh, exponentially and very quickly. That will, that's the way of getting rid of fiscal dominance in a, in a, in a very, in very short order and bringing back long-term prosperity as opposed to uh, short-term, uh, short-term bubbles. And that's all the time we have. Uh, I wish her the best. She is tough as nails. Those rabbi shots are nothing to mess with. So it, it, please extend. Well, bat, they're nothing for Batwoman. They're nothing for Batwoman. <laughs> yeah, those things are nothing to play with. Thank you guys for joining us. Please go to libertariancounterpoint.com and you can find us on all the various social media platforms that Libertarian Counterpoint. Just find us. Thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you next week. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17.